So now the fun begins. We're going to dive into Reason, starting by taking an overview look at the Reason Rack. Let's go to the File menu. We can open up a new sequence, but you'll notice at the bottom any recent sequences I've opened, any recent songs, are down below. That's a nice feature of Reason. When you choose Open, you get this dialog box, which we'll see a lot of, and I will go through in great detail later. But for right now, just click that Reason folder, and you'll see a folder called Demo Songs. And I'm going to pick this first demo song. You can pick any one, and you may not even have these, depending on what Propeller Heads decides to do with demo songs. I'm going to pick the first sequence, and we'll get this song information window. Some demo songs have this. We just click OK. And you will see in front of you the rack, and down below is the sequencer, the song. And you can see scrolling through the rack, lots and lots of instruments and effects and it looks like a real rack. And down below is this area called the sequencer, which is where we record all the notes and automation that go along with our song. And we can drag this middle section to shrink the sequencer, and I'm just gonna drag that all the way down so it disappears, so we can just focus on the rack. In fact, this transport section down below, I'm gonna shrink that too by clicking that arrow. And now what we see is a rack that has a hardware interface at the top. Now this maps to your actual hardware interface. Anything that is green means that there's a connection, a virtual connection between your audio interface and Reason. So here you can see my master audio outputs are mapped to my audio interface, which is good. The yellow lights mean that I have a port on my audio interface which is not mapped to Reason. So I have some extra ports that I'm not using. And if I ever see a red light, it means that I have something mapped to Reason, but there's no corresponding port on my hardware interface. So that's something that needs to be corrected. Now I can expand or shrink any element in my rack by clicking a triangle. Little triangles show me that I can expand something or shrink something. And each element of the rack has its own buttons and features. So with the hardware interface, I can click some of these buttons at the top to show a bigger meter. I can hide the audio interface, I can get more ports, and so forth. And again, we will expand on this much later in the course. Down below the hardware interface, you can see this first element here, which is something called a combinator. It's actually a rack within a rack. So this particular combinator is a mastering suite. And if I go ahead and click this button down below here that says Show Devices, I can see all of the elements in the combinator. So in this case, we've taken some mastering effects, we've grouped them all together, and I can treat them as a single unit, a combinator. Now this is a mixer, it's 14 channels, and I can have as many mixers as I want. And there's even a smaller mixer with six channels that we can use. And that's the great thing about Reason. We can use as many of these as we want without spending more money, and we can cable them up however we want. You'll notice that just like a real mixer, someone has put masking tape next to each of the faders. Well, Reason does that for you automatically. As you add instruments and effects to your rack, Reason will put the masking tape next to the fader, and you can, of course, edit those. Now, if we scroll down, we can see a lot of effects. Here, for example, is a reverb unit. Again, those little triangles mean there's something that can be expanded or shrunk. And down below my reverb unit, I have some other effects. I have this Kong thing, which is an amazing drum designer, which we'll talk about later. There's a sampler called the Nano. There are some more effects. There's a Thor synthesizer. So you can see these racks can get incredibly complex. And what's really nice is that Reason takes care of all of the cabling. You don't have to worry about it at all unless you want to make a change, in which case you can press the Tab key and flip the rack over and you get this really realistic simulation of wires actually dangling there back and forth. And this mess of cabling, you don't have to worry about at all, as I mentioned, or you can move things around just like a real cable and plug it into a port. And as long as it's allowed, Reason will attach that virtual cable to the virtual port. This ability to add virtually unlimited instruments and effects and cable them either automatically or however you want, really makes Reason an incredibly powerful tool. So let's continue our look at the user interface in the next couple tutorials.